we've gotten three Wilder medals. And a Wilder medal is like the Nobel Peace Prize of agriculture. So it's, it's something, it's, it's pretty cool if you do what we do for a living. And we got it for the Golden Delicious Apple, the Red Delicious Apple, and uh, in, in 1972 for the work that Paul Stark Sr., because there's a Paul Stark Jr., uh, Sr. Uh, did in, in dwarfing rootstock. So why is that important? Some of you may know this. 100 years ago, fruit trees grew to 40 feet tall, 30 feet tall. That's what they did. Right? In my childhood, when I, when I went out to pick apples, you climb up the tree to get an apple tree. That's not very smart for commercial production. And so what Paul Stark Sr. did was they brought dwarfing rootstocks into existence. And so most of the apples, so if you buy an apple in the supermarket today, it's probably on a dwarf rootstock. And so the people that pick those apples for a living, they're, they're as tall as me and they just reach up. They don't have to get on ladders and it's a lot more efficient in doing that and they can just kind of run through. In 1926, Again, so one of the interesting things about Stark Brothers was, uh, and again, I'll have these stories as we go through things. Uh, they, were, they, were, they were doing marketing before people knew what marketing was. Uh, and uh, the Stark Bear uh, was in 1914, became kind of a trademark symbol of what they did. And Stark Tree's Bear Fruit came in 1914. And in 1896, we published a color catalog when only Sears was doing that. Uh, and we were mailing it to people's homes, and we were giving it to salespeople who handed out, uh, and way ahead of our time. And in 1926, there was a big deal about the Queen of Romania coming to the United States, and Stark Brothers was working with them ahead of time. To, they wanted a picture of, of her with an apple, and her people said, no, we're not going to do that. That's not what we're there for. And so what they did was they had a gift basket of apples sent up to her, her hotel room. And she gets that, and she thought it was from the hotel, and she bites into an apple. She says, my gosh, this, this apple is incredible. And they said, oh, well, that's from Stark Brothers. And so she did the picture for us, and we, started, we used her in several of the catalogs, and we just kind of leveraged those things. Another piece of Americana that I find to be uh, uh, amazing is uh, after World War II, we had all these things with Victory Gardens in the United States, and it was Paul Stark Sr. that was in charge of that, for the United States, to bring victory gardens to everything that we did. In fact, another political thing with Stark is Harry S. Truman lost one election in his entire life, and that was to uh, Paul Stark Jr.'s brother uh, at, at some uh, local level, and Truman won every election after that. Some of you may remember To Tell the Truth, television show. Paul Stark Jr.'s son, John Logan, was on that show. Uh, and he won, he fooled everybody, but he was the, uh, described as the owner of the largest nursery of the world. In 1974, the N building, and it's, let me stop, pause. We have the R building, which is for receiving. The S building is for shipping. The W building is for wholesale. The P building is for packing. The K building is our cooler. I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> Uh, and then we have the end building. I don't know what the end building was for, but the end building, uh, the end building burned down in 1974. Uh, somebody uh, dropped essentially the equivalent of a match, and the thing just went up in flames. I mean, nothing was left. And at our customer appreciation days in Louisiana in April of 2016, uh, the author of our we had a book commissioned, a history book commissioned, which shameless plug is on sale at our booth for. Uh, $10 if you're interested. Uh, the, um, the, the author's signing books. And, uh, and somebody says, oh gosh, do you remember the fire? And she turns to the page and she says, oh yeah, here's the fire. And somebody else came from and they said, that's my picture right there. And they pointed to themselves near the fire truck there. So there's that much history inside of our company each and every day with what we do. Clay Logan, who lives about three houses away from me, he um, accepted an award on Luther Burbank's behalf, and we'll talk about Luther in a minute, uh, for uh, National Inventors Hall of Fame. I talked about the, um, the bankruptcy and essentially a blessing in disguise. Uh, the way that worked was in 1994, Stark Brothers was sold to this Foster and Gallagher company who owned a lot of other gardening companies at that time. Uh, and then in the spring of 2001, uh, they, they, they filed for bankruptcy, they raided the pension accounts, they filed for bankruptcy. 
So Elmer Kidd, right? Elmer Kidd had worked for this company for 35 years, had put his money into the pension fund for 35 years, and he wakes up in March of, of, of 2001, and his pension fund is gone. He's worked every day for 35 years coming to that company. His pension fund is gone, right? And Cameron Brown and Tim Hebert were interested in this company, and again, because I think of Cameron's dad, and they're on their way to the bankruptcy, to the auction, the auction of the assets. And Cameron Brown is a, a pilot, served our country in Vietnam War. And he's a pilot and they're driving in Chicago to the bankruptcy court and he turns to Tim and he said, this is really strange, there's no planes around. And this was on 9-11, this was the morning of 9-11. And so our company was resurrected from the ashes, literally, on September 11th, 2001. What was interesting, so uh, Foster and Gallagher files for bankruptcy in March, right? And we have a business where we sell predominantly uh, two-year-old trees. We grow and we sell a million uh, two-year-old trees. So every, at any point in time, there's a million trees that are, are for this year's crop and there's a million years for the crop two years after that. And there were a bunch of people in the company, including Terry Stark and including Elmer Kidd, who realized that if somebody was going to buy Stark Brothers, there's no company unless there's trees in the ground. Right? And so they came to work every day in, in March and in April and in May, and they planted these million rootstocks by hand in the field. And then what you do in July and August is you bud these trees. And so the way a rootstock determines how big a tree is going to be, and what you bud on it is determines what tree it's going to be. So these are honey crisp apples, and these are red delicious apples, and these are red haven peaches. And they're doing that on their dime because there's no company unless there's trees in the ground. And uh, so in, on September 11th, there was value to the company because it had a crop. It had a crop it could sell in 2012 to whomever bought the company, in the spring of 20, excuse me, 2002, whoever bought the company. And who's heard of Paul Harvey? So Paul Harvey did a story on it. He talked about the butters. Every, every day, and, and again, you know how he does this, the rest of the story thing. He talks about every day these butters came in and they did this and they did that, and they saved the company. Uh, and they kept it alive, and that's pretty good. There's another Paul Harvey story. I'll tell you that in a minute. So today, our company still stands, purchased out of bankruptcy, September 11, 2001. We're the oldest fruit tree nursery in the world. We are, and we don't, there's nothing to brag about, but it's, we're in Louisiana, Missouri, which is just slightly larger than Mansfield, Missouri, small town on the Mississippi River, and, uh, and home of the Red Delicious Apple, Golden Delicious Apple, and Stark Brothers. We are the, and we're pretty proud of this, we're the largest online direct-to-consumer marketer of fruit trees, berry plants, nut trees, all the things to be successful, all the information that helps you be successful. We've worked hard at that. I think I'll talk a little bit about it, but we talk about embracing technology. And uh, we've got a crackerjack IT team who makes that happen with, with our web team. A number of years ago in our strategic planning efforts, we said the, 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 the next generation of customers for us grew up with Amazon. And so th their expectation online is what Amazon does and how do we do that? And the f for a few weeks, everybody's eyes rolled, except for IT, because they knew they could do this. And if you go to our website today, it is as good as Amazon's is, as far as if you buy this, you, you, you want to buy that. I, did, um, I talked about doing these presentations. I did a presentation in Boston in uh, maybe a year and a half ago. And the speaker with me, she started talking about, she's got these eight fruit trees and she's had them for five years and she's got no fruit and no sign of fruit. And I said, what kind of trees, what are the trees? And she gives me the list of trees. And I said, you don't have a pollinator, right? You're not gonna get any fruit until you get a pollinator. And the reason I say that is this, is you can't get off the phones, you can't leave our store, you can't leave our website without the gentle tap that says, you need a pollinator, right? You can't just buy, sometimes you can't buy just one tree. Even if you do buy a self-pollinating tree, if you buy two of them, you'll get bigger fruit faster, and you're going to get that information. Uh, and, and so our website does that. And, our, and uh, our roots, pun intended, make us a fixture in our small town of who we are.